Well, hello, C++ programmers. Brian Malloy here, and today I'd like to talk about blitting. We're going to use the simple direct media layer 1.2, SDL 1.2, to blit. And it's a snowy day, sleeting outside. The university has canceled school, and I'm in here blitting. Can you imagine? Okay, so let me just show you what we're going to get. If we run this, we get this little diamond here, okay? So I would really, basically, what I'd like to show you is how we can um, get that thing on there. Okay, so I've got, let me just clean this up, go to the top and show you. What have I got in this directory? I've got a main program consisting of maybe 60 or 70 lines of C++. I have a make file and I have an images directory. And in my images directory, I have two images. Uh, let me show you uh, the, the one that I'm going to blit, and that's this little diamond. So take a look, there's the diamond that I hope to blit onto a screen, and it's 256 pixels by 256 pixels. Okay, so we're going to blit that. Let me show you, and, and I think I already compiled it and ran it, and there's what we get. The question is, how do we do that? And there's how we did it. Okay, so first, I'd like to take you through an overview of this, this program, which is actually only 55 lines of code, and then I'll drill down into specifics. So first, we have two con constants. These will specify the width and height of the screen that we make. We have initialization, an init function that initializes SDL and starts our game clock. We have a function called blit that uses SDL blit surface to blit that diamond onto a screen. And then we have our main function. Let's go ahead and start in main. The first thing I do is I call init to initialize SDL. Then I have this little function that says where I want it to put the window that it creates, the screen that it creates. Let's move it over a little bit so it comes out at 100. I'm sorry, that's I don't want it to be 100 down. I want it to be 100 over. So let's move it over 100. And um, so that just tells us where the screen will be positioned when I do it. And then I make a screen. A screen is an SDL surface. And I make this screen upon which I'm going to blit things. Now in SDL 1.2, we can only have one screen that we blit things on. But in SDL 2.0, you can have uh, more than one. But this is about 1.2. So this SDL set video mode is an SDL function that will return a surface of size width and height, which I already showed you to be 256 by 256. This is the color depth, and we're going to use double buffering. I'll explain double buffering also. But we're allowed to look these functions up, and I actually already looked up that one. So this is SDL set video mode. And essentially, it returns a surface. It takes the width and height, the BPP. If BPP is 0, it'll set your, uh, your color depth to whatever your current display is. And that's kind of what we want. And let's see if it talks about our double buffering, hardware double buffering. I'll explain that in a little bit. OK, so that happens. We now have a screen upon which we can blit, but we check. If this comes back null, then we didn't get one and we got a problem. OK? OK, so we've got a screen upon which we can blit images. Now we want to get our image. Our image is the diamond that I already showed you. It's a bitmap, and really the default is uh, all bitmaps. But we can get a third-party library, SDL image, that will allow us to load uh, PNGs, JPEGs, and even GIFs. And so that would be more versatile. But this discussion today is just going to be about bitmaps. So we don't need any third-party libraries to do that. We'll use this load BMP, a function resident already in SDL. And it's going to return our surface temp that we want to optimize. We'll do some performance analysis to see how much optimization we got in a little bit. But uh, for now, we'll just say we got this, this surface. We make sure we got it, and then we optimize it using SDL display format. Let me copy this and show you that we can look that up. That's just a, a little, uh, a little uh, you know, conversion. So let's take a look. It's just going to enable us to blit fast. So there it is. Convert a surface to, a to the display format. And so it's for fast splitting. Let me see if it says anything in there about fast. Yeah, suitable for fast splitting. Okay, we, we'll see how fast it was in a little bit. Okay, so we convert it to, so we, it returns a surface. Let me point out that, that this display uh, format converts a surface, but it, dis, but it returns another surface. So we're going to pass in temp and get the image we want to blit. So there it is. I pass in the temp that I loaded there. It, it, it um, 
formats it for fast splitting and I put it in there and then I free the original surface okay so we don't have memory leaks then I call the blit function I showed you and I'll drill down into that in a little bit but then I call the blit function which I'll explain in a little bit and then we start our event loop this is our event loop so we're going to use an SDL event which is a C struct that has various data attributes in it that we'll use okay so this is our event loop it's an infinite loop the same one I've been in all my life it starts here and ends there starts on line 43 and ends on line 51 and we're gonna pull for events and and by the way STL is written in C so we want to pass things by reference but you can't because C only has passed by value so we're gonna pass the we're gonna kind of Mickey Mouse it We'll pass the address of the struct so it can load the event in there. And we'll see, was the event type a quit? If it is, we break. What does SDL quit mean? Well, that's that X in the upper right corner. Watch, let me do this, compile it. See that X there? If I press that, that activates that event. How? This flag is initially false. When I press that X, it becomes true. This statement becomes true, and I break out of the infinite loop. How else do I get out of this loop? Another way is to press a key, and if that key happens to be the escape key, then I'll also break out. Let me show you. You can see, watch. I'll run it, and I watch me hit the escape key. Did you see that? I, well, maybe you heard it. <laughs> I hit the escape key. When I hit that escape key, I break out of this infinite loop. And after I look for these events, the next thing I want to do is flip the buffer. Okay, I'll explain that also in a minute. And then when I get out of this while loop, I want to free that image surface. I'll free that surface, and then I won't have any memory leaks except the ones that are resident already in SDL, and there's nothing I can do about that. Notice I'm not freeing the screen. SDL recommends that we do not free the screen, so we don't. Okay, two more things to explain, blitting and uh, flipping. I'll explain those, and then we'll do a little performance analysis and see how much time we're saving with this with various things that we do. Let's go up here to Blit. Okay, we pass in the image, the diamond, and we pass in the screen upon which we want to Blit the diamond, and then we play around. Okay, this is a struct. I get the width, W and H are data attributes that describe the width and height of the image stored in this SDL surface. We know that to be 256 by 256 pixels. And then we have these rectangles, these SDL recs. Most of the things we're going to do are be rectangles like bounding boxes. Now, what do these data attributes refer to? This is the XY coordinate for, in our case, in this case, the source of the image, which is, by the way, 0, 0 is the upper left. Let me just show you. If I uh, run this, we already know this, I think, but this is 0, 0. This would be 256 by 256. The coordinate right here would be x would be 256, y would be 0. This coordinate down here, x is 0. Oh, I lost it. Where did it go? x is 0. i got to go get it. Uh, x, is, x down here is 0, y is 256. So that's what we're doing up there. Let me move this back up there. Move this back up there so you can see what's happening. So. This says, get the upper left corner of, this, of the surface, take the whole width and the whole height, and put it at this destination on the screen, namely 0, 0. These two parameters do nothing. They're useless. Why? What would we be, you know, what? no good. We don't do anything. And then we use this split surface that says, take this image, use this structure to tell you where and how much. So this is where, this is how much. And put it on the screen that location. Let's play around with this just a little bit to try to make this more concrete. Let's just split only half. Let's just split half of the surface. Okay? Can you see what's going to happen? What we're going to take the zero zero. This is where we take this. This we're going to take that diamond image at the zero zero location, but only split split half the width and half the height. That means that three quarters of the screen is going to be black. The lower right part will be black. Let me just see if, let me make sure I save this. Okay, let me get in here, compile it, and run it. And there you see it. You see, let me put this right next to it. Okay, so this says, take the image at zero, zero. I did, but just split the half the width and half the height. 
Okay, and there's what happens. So let's get rid of that. Let me go back to square one and let me split it there. You see what's going to happen now? What, what's going to happen now is we're going to take 0, 0, but we're going to, oh, I don't want that to be that. I want over W. Oh, no, I want that to be 2, but I want this to be width and this to be height. I was talking instead of thinking. I do that a lot. Start at 0, 0 of the source, but stick it in the middle, right in the middle of the screen. So now the upper left part is going to be black. I hope you see what's happening here. I don't know if I'm doing a good job of explaining this, but now you see what we did? Let me just put it right next to it. So start at the zero, zero. There's the zero, zero. So we're getting this part of the diamond. Take the whole thing. We're going to blit the whole thing. So there it is. You see it? And we're going to start it. Where is it going to put it on the screen? At W over 2, H over 2. Now, your question is, where's the rest of it? I don't see it. I lost it again. Well. It got clipped, okay? The rest of the image got clipped. It's like when you clip your hair. If your hair gets clipped, where does it go? It goes on the floor. Where's the rest of this image? It fell on the floor. You can think of it that way. I don't know. It probably doesn't make sense, but you know what you know what I mean here. So I'm just trying to explain what this blit function does. I hope that works for you. Uh, so we're back to this. Let me see. I think we're back to the beginning. Okay, we're back to the beginning. All right, so we're back to square one. Now we know what this, this thing's doing here. Two more things to explain. The other two things are the double buffering. One more thing, really, the double buffering here. And uh, I want to explain how double buffering works, and then we'll do a little performance. So let me just cross this off first. Let's not do that. And then let me see if I can explain why we want to do that. So here we go. I'm, I'm trying. Okay, all we're going to see is bl black. You see, because we didn't flip the buffer. Okay, so what does that mean? Let me let me put it back in so we do the flip. If you get a black screen, maybe you didn't get to your flip. <laughs> okay, let me show you. Let me just bring up die, my little diagram editor. And let me go ahead and show you what I'm uh, what I think is happening here. So how does double buffering work? It works like this. Okay, so there's one buffer. Here's another buffer. We got two buffers. Okay. All right, there we go. And let's get a little pointer. Here's a pointer. Let me call let me call it something. This is pointer. Okay, we got a pointer, and here's my little pointer. Did I get it? Yeah. Okay, so it starts pointing here and here. Okay? All right, so my pointer starts here. And so we what that means, this is what we're gonna draw. We're gonna draw that. There ain't nothing there yet. There's nothing there. We're, so we draw and we fill. So we fill and we draw. If I don't flip the buffer, nothing we don't see, we see black because we filled this and we drew this. When I call the SDL flip, that moves this, stop that. That moves, oh, you are so bad. That moves this down here, and this is what we draw and we fill. So we're doing the, the SDL is threaded. So these things are kind of done in parallel. So while we're drawing this to the screen, we're filling this bluff, bluffer. See, that's a bluffer. No, I'm sorry, it's a buffer. So while we're drawing this buffer, we fill this buffer. That's how double buffering works. And then when we do the flip, that goes up there, you see, and we draw that and we fill this. So that's double buffering, and that's the way this works. So that's our double buffering system. You see what I mean here? Uh, and, and so um, we have to flip the surface. We're doing double buffering. Now, one of the questions you might ask is, how long does it take to init? Now, when I do this SDL init, I initialize the video, um, and I also start the game clock to zero. So what we can do is we can just put a little, uh, I'm trying to do STD, colon, colon, C out, and I want to print the time. Okay, so I want SDL get ticks. Okay, I'm going to make a prediction. Okay, the clock is set to zero here. By the time we get here, we haven't done much. I'm going to say it takes five milliseconds. By the way, our clock is calibrated in milliseconds. A millisecond is a thousandth of a second. So let's see how long it took to initialize there. So let me go ahead and, oh, I've got dia running. Okay, so let me compile it and run it. Ten, it took ten seconds. I'm sorry. Let's run it again. It took eight. Seven. Oh, it's getting lower. This will be six. Wrong. Okay, so that's how long it took to initialize this system. 
Let's see how long it, let's see how much we saved here. Are you interested in seeing how much? This is, we loaded this. What if we made that be image? Let's do this. Well, let's print the time. No, here's what we'll do. We'll print the time. Um, so we'll print the time to blit. I'm going to print the time, see how long it took to blit. Where do I call that blit? Oh, right here. So we'll call it here and we'll call it here and we'll see how long that, that took. I'm going to say a couple milliseconds. Does that sound about right? Let me try. So let's go up here, compile it, run it. No, zero. It took zero. How can it take zero? Let me get rid of this first one. Can it be really zero to blit? You'd think it would take a little longer to blit. Now remember, I optimized it so it's lickety split, I guess. Let me compile it. Zero. Zero. Stop that. Okay, well, let's not optimize. Let's see what happens if we don't optimize. So let's uh, let's do this. How can I not optimize? We'll call this image. Are you following this? Am I being weird? Okay, so we won't do this. So let's get rid of that, and we'll get rid of that. Oh, we also got to get rid of this. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I'm going to load the image unoptimized. I'm going to skip this code that optimized it, and I'm just going to blit it. Let's see how much saving. We probably, what is, well, I don't know. Let me compile. One millisecond? We've saved exactly one millisecond. Okay, let me say that doesn't sound like much because it ain't. It's a thousandth of a second. But think about it if we're, if we're blitting a lot of these objects. You know, these milliseconds can add up. Let me see if it's always one. That was one. That was, this is a fast computer. I got a, an, I, that took zero and it wasn't even optimized. But I've got a fast 4770K uh, i7. Okay, that, so roughly if you don't optimize, it seems to take about, uh, let me get rid of this. It seems to take about um, a millisecond. If you optimize, it seems to take zero. Let me see if I'm right. Let me uh, save it and compile it. Zero. Okay, blitting is zero if you optimize. Okay, so that's it. I don't know. I hope this helps. This is my uh, attempt to try to explain blitting. We'll be doing lots of blitting, and our next video will be about animation. So, hey, Brian Malloy here. Uh, happy game development. Happy C++ programming. Uh, over and out.